As the official start of winter inches closer, people are getting ready for the colder season, and so is BC's wildlife. Now, some animals head south, others hunker down here. But others you will see out and about all throughout winter here in the south coast. That includes some hummingbirds. Darius Madavi is here with more on how those birds survive the winter so far north. Darius, what's their secret? Come on, Dan, I'm not going to give it up that easily. First, let's cover what species we're actually talking about. Now, BC is home to five hummingbird species. Rufus, Annas, Calliope, Black-Chinned, and Ruby-Throated on the eastern side of the Rockies. But of those, only one spends the winter here. Anna's hummingbird. Uh, this is Anna's hummingbird. If you live on BC's coast or parts of the interior, you've probably seen them around in the summer. But if you're in the south, you may continue to see them even on the chilliest days of the year. And not only do they stick around, they stay active. These birds aren't hunkering down in a cave and hibernating the winter away. Although, as Lee Gass told me, they do have a related trick up their sleeve. Torpor is the same idea. Turn the furnace down. Like that's what we did in our house when we were when I was growing up. Furnace always went down to 55. Uh, why? My parents didn't want to pay for the fuel to heat up a house where everybody was sleeping. Well, it's the same thing for hummingbirds. That's a great metaphor. So if you see an anise hummingbird flitting around in the winter, don't panic. They're probably doing just fine. That is good news. Now, some people claim they don't remember seeing hummingbirds in the winter when they were kids. Have they always been around here, at least on the south coast? Uh, no, actually. They're, they're absolutely right. Anna's hummingbirds were not always here in the winter. In fact, they used to really just be confined to Southern California. A century ago, that was the case. Now, Gas told me this was uh, really already starting to change in the 60s when he was a student. They started to creep into Oregon. And in the decades since, they've continued to make their way further and further north. You can see, uh, take a look at this uh, map of their range. You can see they're up and down the coast now. And if we zoom in to here in BC, again, they spend... Uh, uh, the summer uh, up and down the coast, but not so much, uh, or sorry, they spend year round here uh, down further south. Now, the, a lot of species are experiencing stuff like this because of climate change, but this is much more extreme than the shifts most species are seeing. And experts say it's because of how we're changing the landscape of the West Coast. We're planting more exotic flowering plants and giving them new sources of nectar. Now, Gas says he's still noticing the shift around his home on Quadra Island in the Salish Sea. Like I mixed up some food for them this morning. Well, it, they'd never been here till this year, even though people a kilometer and a half away had them year round for the last 20 years. Darius, if the hummingbirds stick around here because we're feeding them, does that mean we need to support them through the winter? This touches on a really important point. Now, I think every winter I see at least a couple articles about making sure the Anna's hummingbirds survive the winter and how important it is to keep your feeders topped up. And I think this comes, at least in part, from the fact that when most people hear hummingbird, they picture a tiny, colorful blur, uh, bird fluttering around a flower. And, I mean, we saw that in all these, a lot of these photos. Uh, it's true that they love nectar. They are fantastic pollinators. So in the winter, with no flowers around, people think surely they will starve to death without our help and our feeders. But luckily, hummingbirds are tougher than we give them credit for. Some of BC's species, like the rufous hummingbird, migrate thousands of kilometers a dozen times in their lifetime. And all hummingbirds can stomach a lot more than just sugar. They love sugar. Uh, they love sugar in gardens. They love sugar in the woods. And they love sugar in feeders. But that's not all they eat. So they'll catch bugs. They clean out spider webs. Uh, they get the spiders and the bugs that are in the spider webs. Um, they'll pick things up off the ground. I've seen them do that. With that being said, keeping your feeders topped up with sugar water certainly won't do the bar, uh, birds any harm. In fact, gas recommends upping the sugar to water ratio to three to one in the winter to help them really pack in the calories. So if you set out a feeder this winter, it's a win-win. You'll have some very appreciative hummingbirds coming by and you get to look on and appreciate your new feathered friends. Fast moving too. Darius mm -hmm. Madavi, thanks very much. Thank you.